Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see everybody. Lots of new faces here. Great, great, great. Um, well, welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, I am Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo here in Burbank, California. And this is um, our monthly pre Q and A call. It's called Ask the Sensei. So each month, uh, I'm here. And um, our techno sensei, Dan Leonard from Home Studio Master, is here answering tech questions. And we invite one of our esteemed colleagues to uh, join us and answer your questions. So um, we are super excited to have Byron Wagner, um, VO, VO veteran and uh, VO entrepreneur and innovator joining us. He's the creator of abiton.com, which is a really cool new resource that is uh, basically a clearinghouse or, or a centralized point um, to find every event and offering that's happening in the VO world. And uh, keep, keep track of that. Keep your finger on the pulse. Um, so we'll be here answering your questions for the next hour. So um, uh, I'll do a, a, an introduction of everybody. We'll talk with, with Byron a little bit. And then um, what we'll do is take your questions in the chat um, and uh, we'll, we'll answer as many as we can um, in, in the hour. And then afterwards, if, uh, if you have extra time, um, we hang around and go into breakout rooms. So if you have other questions, afterwards or want to hang out and talk to other people about the things that came up during the session. We'll, we'll spend a little bit of time after, after that. Um, so let's see, uh, Jeffrey Gilbank is our Dojo team who is here supporting. So if you need anything, um, touch base with him. It looks like we got a good crowd assembled here. Um, let's see, I think, I think that's everything in terms of how this, this works. Um, welcome Dan, welcome Byron. Dan, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about you and uh, your perspective on things, and then we'll uh, talk with Byron. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm Dan Leonard, the home studio master and the uh, techno sensei here at the dojo. Uh, if you have any questions on home studio stuff, and usually it concerns stuff that you don't need, uh, which is usually my answer, uh, Put it in the chat room and we can we can discuss that and um but i'm an expert on home voiceover studios and how to create the proper environment uh for your recording uh of home voiceover audio of course we're now going to start referring to it as personal professional studios personal professional yeah. studios yeah it means i'm gonna have to change my name from the home studio master but right. you know, so be it <laughs> You get some makes it sound far more stuff. professional. <laughs> no, I'm the professional, professional home studio master. But Excellent. anyway, you could good, but that, but it's, but it is interesting because this is what's evolving, right? Ten years ago, exactly. there wasn't home studio for everybody, and now it's it, what and what and how it functions is different. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, Byron, why don't you introduce yourself? I know you guys go way back too. So, um, yeah, tell officer, us I've never seen that man before in my life. <laughs> Uh, I know where I live. <laughs> He's walking distance from where I live. A, a little bit of a walk, but anyway. Um, my name is Byron Wagner. Uh, I started doing voiceover actually a long time ago when I was a kid and then got an FCC ticket so I could do a board shift at a radio station. Uh, and so I am a, uh, I'm a recovering radio guy and having to get rid of the golden pear-shaped tone announcer voice mm -hmm. is one of my biggest challenges. But I've been doing um, VO professionally since about 12 years now, something like that. Lots of audiobooks, animation, commercials, corporate narration, you know, bar mitzvahs, weddings, the usual. <laughs> yeah. And then you have a you have a, a, a background as an engineer and innovator. Um, that's kind of interesting to, to hear. I do. I I um I started inventing stuff. Uh, when I was a kid with food that usually didn't quite go together and then later on uh, electronics and I got very interested in well okay when I was in high school and a lot of kids had like a $500 beater car to drive back and forth 
I had a tape recorder that was worth $500. I had a Roberts <laughs> 778X with crossfield heads, could take 10 and a half inch reels, go 15 inches per second, and had an eight track recorder in the side. So, <laughs> and I took the bus to school. So, uh, so yeah, I got, I, I became a professional. Well, basically what happened was I noticed that the radio station had, um, you know, Ampex tape recorders and Sony C37A condenser microphones. And I could sneak my friends and my relatives in in the evenings and do recordings. And then I got into multi-track recording, did barter deals and trade outs with the multi-track studios in Omaha for, you know, for time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I became a recording engineer, a record producer. I went away to school, uh, majoring in uh, basically originally broadcast. And then when I found out that was, they thought it was a journalism thing. Um, and I had already been producing and engineering, well, directing a series of color shows for the NBC outlet when I was a senior through a junior achievement program, I switched my major to motion picture production. But as I say, I left school after a few years and came out to California. And um, my first gig out here was Ike and Tina and my other gigs in, you know, basically uh, I was at Motown as a staff engineer. And uh, so I was, a, I basically, I was a record producer and engineer until, um, as they say in the early eighties, it shipped gold and returned platinum. Mm -hmm. and uh, got out of the record business but along the way i had you know been creating electronic gizmos and doodads and recording related stuff and then later uh i did a project that ended up being a, a big museum downtown called the taper economics taper hall of economics and finance at the california museum of science and industry which is no longer there mm -hmm. thank you to the earthquake in 94. Mm -hmm. and um so along the way i invented various things patented various things um, if you Google my name in the Google patent search thing, you can find my nefarious history. Mm -hmm. And one of them um, was the first commercial ISDN codec, which came about because Disney had an interesting problem. Uh, basically, they couldn't go day and date foreign releases, unlike their competitors, you know, MGM, Warner, UA, because their competitors could do subtitles. And Disney couldn't because half their audience was illiterate because they were five. <laughs> and so it typically took Disney, you know, 18 to 36 months to do the translations and the casting and the callbacks and the mix down and the laybacks and then the final releases of the foreign prints. And they literally had, you know, their casting director sitting on the floor of his office with a cassette machine listening to auditions from DHL envelopes. And I said, why don't you spend a hundred bucks on a Farallon Mac recorder and just email the stuff? And he said, can we do that? And I said, yeah. And I thought that was the end of it. And then I realized that they didn't know about the technology that was coming along that would do digital compression in real time. And so that same casting director, Blake Todd, could at that point with the devices that we put together, literally come in and not have to lift his butt out of his chair in his office and attend with CD quality audio, mm -hmm. the recording sessions in Paris at Teletota or in Tokyo and Rapongi or whatever. And most importantly, still do nine holes of golf on his favorite course before the sun <laughs> went down in the winter, in the summertime, right? Yeah. And so you, so you yeah. basically have, so in that same, in the same way we were just talking about Dan, uh, evolving what the definition of what is needed, mm -hmm. you really were at a forefront of what changed, what has shifted the industry that has allowed us all to have personal, uh, professional uh, recordings. Yes, studio. and the best part is it's now obsolete. You Indeed. can't get an ISDN you know line anymore. <laughs> you know you've made it when you That's when right. you evolved. That's well, the, the metric for me, I have a very specific metric. There is a it, it was canceled for 18 months during COVID, but it's back now. The TRW Amateur Radio Swap Meet, which is held on the last Saturday of every month by LAX in the parking lot. Uh, it's no longer TRW because it got bought by Northrop Grumman or whoever it is. Anyway, uh -huh. they have everything from old missile parts to ham radio gear and so on. When you see one of your products, like I started a company called Abaton. We did the first 300 DPI scanner for the Mac. When you see one of your products being sold used for 15 bucks at the TRW radio swap meet, then you know you've really gone through the entire cycle. <laughs> You're an antique. You're and officially I, an antique. And I have seen Telos, Codex, and so on <laughs> used. Used would have been 1200 bucks five years ago, and now you can't give them away. But that's okay because because as long as you're on the cutting edge of what's coming next and i think that's i think that's really interesting too so yeah. i'd love to start getting questions in um and one of the other things that i think is really um interesting um and always something that's on our minds here at 
at the dojo is that you brand yourself as an, a, an entrepreneur. So as we're asking questions, as we're answering questions, and I put forward, I put forward to you, uh, everybody, in terms of like, if you have any business mindset, uh, how, 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 how can we uh, put questions forward of like, how are you thinking out of the box? How are you thinking about what's next? I think sometimes on our journey, we're like, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Um, and then understanding that it's also our responsibility to be able to think about what else can I do or how how can it be done differently or what? And so so just I'm just putting out that idea of if I put out the word entrepreneur and put it together with your voiceover, what questions come up? Where are you, you know, where, where are you feeling relationship to that or stuck with that? I'm just going to put that out there as, as something like a, a theme in addition to anything else that's on your mind. We, we can, we can ask any question that we can help, you know, any, any place that you're stuck or wondering, we can help you move forward. Um, so let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. Um, Oh, oh, here's the thing about question and answer calls, guys. Um, we need questions. So if you have questions, <laughs> um, otherwise it, it's it's a little bit different. Uh, we can we can talk. Um, I can ask I can ask some questions. Um, um, uh, well, well, as we're as we're waiting, so put put your questions in the chat, everybody, and don't be shy. This is what this is about. Um, and um, oh, we forgot to put up the poll. I'm sorry. Let me just do that real quick. Um, actually, this this is helpful. Um, I just put up this poll that I forgot to do at the beginning, um, but this this gives us a sense of where everybody who's on the call is, so we can address the level of um, of uh, how how we're answering questions um, and get get a sense of where people are at. Um, awesome. So. Uh, I still don't see any questions. So um, I'm going to ask oh. a question. Oh, oh we got one from Alana Rosen. Um, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So, okay, cool. Uh, you want to bring her up? Yeah, I'll pin you and then I'll ask you to unmute Alana. Okay. And uh, with questions, guys, if you can, uh, we, uh, we can uh, ask your questions succinctly so we can get answers to you fully. Um, and here we go. Where's Alana? Oh, she's she's here. Hang on. We we can't quite hear you. So you need to go to her home studio. Oh, she's oh, there she is. <laughs> Should I see her unmuted? Do we have your voice, Alana? I can ask your question in the room. If not, um... is this better? Oh yeah. Hey. Hello. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Alana. Um, I was wondering if there is a difference that you've seen in certain markets in terms of getting into them or working with them, uh, such as like academia or um, audiobooks or entertainment like video games or movies, cartoons, things like that. Are there certain markets that are easier um, to innovate with and to be to be an entrepreneur in than others? Um, I would say generally yes. Uh, what what uh, thoughts, Stan? Uh, well, think? it depends on what market you're talking about. Like, are you talking? There's definitely some improvements in the defense market, as as Byron will tell you. <laughs> uh, now, it, it, because because we can have a home studio or a personal professional studio, your marketplace is anywhere you want it to be. Uh, and that's what going back to this idea of being an entrepreneur, you've got to go out and find your work. Uh, no one's going to find it for you. Mm -hmm. So find out what it is that uh, you get hired for. And that's what you try to exploit. I also try to tell people what's your superpower? What is it that you really know a whole lot about and find the people that need your voice to do that kind of stuff. And that's a good entree into, into the business. So don't think about it as, you know, I'm going to go, you know, concentrate on Dallas, or I'm going to concentrate on New York, or I'm going to concentrate on LA, you're going to concentrate on the voiceover marketplace, which is the entire world. Well, and I also think I also, what, what you just said, Dan, I hear um, define, refine, right, you define what are you bringing to the party? 
then refine what your skills are and understanding of what is needed in that marketplace and how you can serve, right? Thinking like an entrepreneur um, and, then, um, and then find, right? And then actively go seek out clients. Um, so in general, the answer is yes. Um, honing in and then uh, love to hear your take on this, Byron. At the dojo we talk about, there's um, gatekeeper, non-gatekeeper um, realms, right? And different, different genres have different ways that you access the levels of it, right? So I think it's good to understand that. So things like audiobooks, you could get started in audiobooks um, tomorrow, you can set up a profile on ACX and you can start auditioning and you can connect up, right? And then, so you can get started and then, and then how does that get you to like working with some of the top publishers and getting a certain rate per finished hour? Um, you know, that, that's a different, that's a different, that's a different thing, but you can get where you get started and then defining where you're after, right? And that's something else you need to do as an entrepreneur, right? So um, yeah, narration and narration and all realms of narration, um, audiobooks are places that you can build direct relationships with clients pretty readily if you know what you're doing, right? Know what you're doing and bringing. Does that make sense? What, what are your thoughts, Byron? Well, the first answer to your question is yes, everything has changed dramatically. Um, particularly in the last 10 years, some of it because of technology, some of it because of COVID. Um, but as an example, um, my first audiobook was done almost exactly 11 years ago today, and it was for Random House, previously to them becoming Penguin Random House. And the way that that happened was a woman who had been a student of mine at the University of Sound Arts years before had ended up uh, we ended up hooking back up again because of this new thing called Facebook. And it turned out that she had become the second in command on the, the production side at the Random House's West Coast office. And I had gotten interested, I had started doing voiceover again, and I had gotten interested in doing audiobooks. And um, I said, you know, oh, wow, do you ever have auditions? She goes, yeah, we do cattle calls twice a year, but, you know, send me your demo. And uh, so I didn't have a demo. I found out that the Audio Publishing Association Conference in New York was four days from that day. Mm. Um, I found out about Pat Fraley offering a class called Billion Dollar Read, which he would do, you know, once every three or four months, and he'd do a, like a weekend session. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have time to wait for that. He had put that particular, con well, workshop in a spiral-bound notebook, uh, which he sold for, I think, $100, $125. And I didn't have time to wait for it to get there in the mail. So I found him, called him up and said, can I come by and buy a copy in person? And he says, well, we're going out for dinner. I'll leave it for you literally, you know, on the bench by the front door, leave me a check. So I did. I read it on the plane. I got there. And when I met producers and so on at APAC and they asked me for their demos, I said, ask, ask me for my demo. I said, oh, sure. You know, I'll send it to you when I get back. Came back, hired Pat to produce a demo for me, sent it to... Um, Janet Stark Shaheen at Random House. And two days later, she said, um, here's your first title if you want to do it. Now, that was 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. That was before ACX existed. That was before audiobooks became available on impulse as a download on your cell phone while you're riding the bus. <laughs> and so now if you look at the specs, growth in audiobooks is over 15% year over year. It's insane. Mm -hmm. um, Random House, when I started doing books, was producing uh, maybe mm, 300 titles a year. They're now doing over 1,800 titles a year, and that's just Penguin Random House. Mm -hmm. So there's tre tremendous opportunities in audiobooks and Moths to a Flame, because ACX exists now. There are lots of people who want to do audiobooks or are trying to do audiobooks who don't have any training and who don't understand in the slightest how much work is involved. But in my case, uh, I mean, to go back to your original question of the markets and so on, when I first started doing voiceover, people would invariably say, well, what's your genre? And I would go, oh, I'm a VO whore. I'll do any of that stuff. You know, that would be great. I like all of it. And they just kind of shook their head and laughed and went, yeah, okay, you'll see. 
-hmm. And it, it, what happens is it's kind of this confluence of the forces of you're going to be attracted to the things that you enjoy doing the most, mm -hmm. and you're going to be better at those things than the things that you don't like doing, and therefore you're going to be more successful. So it's kind of this mm -hmm. self-selecting population. And In my case... Oh, 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 oh uh, that goes back to what Dan was saying of mm -hmm. go out... Where where are you finding where are you finding the work is connecting with right you? your superpowers as he yeah. said exactly yeah. and in my case I was very surprised in that ninety percent of the people that I met doing VO I would say oh yeah I'm doing audio they go oh geez really because that's kind of the lowest thing on the totem pole there's no residuals there's no this or that and the other um, and then I would say yeah but I don't have to audition they just send me books. Mm -hmm. and they would then I get people's attention so you can apply and map that across you know what's going on in audiobooks to everything else I mean it used to be there were 600 people in LA and they did all the voices for all the animated cartoons and that was it and now especially because of COVID the idea that you have to physically be live in Los Angeles or New York or maybe you know Houston if you're doing anime um, that doesn't exist anymore. They're, they've actually, people have been forced into being able to use technology to solve these problems. And now, as long as you got decent bandwidth and decent latency, you can live in Ulaanbaatar if you have clientele. Yeah. So, well, that's yeah. great. So, hope, uh, Alana, does that give a, a perspective of, was there enough detail in yes? <laughs> we, we can talk more about, you know, um, <clears throat> about what, what you're talking about. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's, it's really good information. I like um, what Dan was saying, you know, specifically about the superpower and Byron, what you said about like finding your interest and the things you're interested in, you'll be better at yeah. those two, like that all makes total sense. Yep. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Well, let's, let's keep on going uh, with, with some more questions. Um, Ethan James Lynch, or as we like to call him around the dojo, EJL. You know, he's the next in theater. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I always love hearing it from you. And I, uh, you actually kind of touched upon my question. Um, you know, you were talking about technology, right? And how, you know, the technology just in the pandemic has expanded the markets. Um, I wanted to know what you think, you know, with your background and your experience, what, what do you think the next innovation in the audition process is? What do you think the next technological jump will be that we will be experiencing as a VO talent? Well, I can tell you my nightmare. <laughs> AI. I'll take it. AI. I mean, as, as, a, as for auditioning. I mean, let's put it this way. If I were a casting director, there is the first kind of, I mean, it's really interesting, the kind of hurdles that are put in, put in place, and reasonably so, there is a huge emphasis because the existing systems are all manual, you must name your file properly. You must reply to the appropriate people by the appropriate times. You must, you know, either slate or not slate or tail slate or all this other stuff. And what casting directors will do is when they get something and the file's named wrong, they don't even listen to it. Because if you can't even follow directions about submitting your audition, then geez, trying to direct you in a session, that's the assumption, right? That's kind of the linear extrapolation, which could be completely wrong. You could be the most talented person in the bunch. So what people have done in other universes, in other words, like right now, if you apply to work at a Whole Foods and you walk in the door and say, can I have a job application? They will say, go back to your house and do it online. And we will review it. Now, when they say we will review it, 70% of all job applications for any company larger than like five people go through an AI process that ranks the applicants on the basis of amount of school completed, what's your job history, what's your salary history, and that it kind of winnows through the thousands down to kind of like the first cut of a couple hundred. And that's the only thing that ever gets seen by a human being who might have a chance in hell of passing your resume on or your job application on to the local Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or, or you know, shoe store. So, so the nightmare would be, what's the problem with ACX? What's the problem with the pay to plays? You know, right now it's, well, who responds first? Because there's fatigue. 
you know, and, and when you're a customer who goes through a pay to play, as opposed to a, you know, a, a, a higher budget customer who's going through a casting agency, who's going through agents, who's going through, you know, union talent or whatever, that winnowing process is hugely time consuming. And so there's a big value add for somebody who can go, I know who you want. It's that guy. He lives in Tulsa and he does the best fake Daffy Duck, you know, parody or whatever it is that somebody wants. It's sorry, Sam, what's his name? Always. Or, or Mar, uh, Morgan Freeman. Who does the best more? It's like, so my nightmare is people will start realizing, yeah, we can get rid of the first 90% of the people who are auditioning for this commercial or animation piece or whatever, using AI, we'll have the AI listen to their demos. And in a certain sense, whoever starts that company is gonna make a fortune and be hated by everyone. Um, is it gonna happen this week? No, next year, maybe. But so in terms of a projection of how things are going to change, technology tends to be the lever, you know, the, uh, Atlas, uh, fulcrum, lever long enough, move the world. So look at, uh, there's a thing called Positron, mm -hmm. which terrified people initially as an automated proofing system, primarily for long form, like audiobooks. And it got everyone's panties in a bunch of things. Oh, they're trying to replace proofers. It's like, no, because the automated system of Positron couldn't differentiate. What it could do was tell you that you made a contraction out of, you know, is not and you said it as isn't instead of is not and it'll tell you that but if you're doing an audiobook for example and you've got fred and joe and they're talking and you say a fred line in the joe voice mistakenly because you weren't looking carefully enough at the attributions he said they said so on it can't tell that so it turns out the positron is an excellent tool for a proofer to use so you're going to see more stuff like this mm -hmm. you're going to see more ai you know ai is going to come in on the low end of stuff yeah. People are that price sensitive and quality insensitive. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you look at what's happened over the last 10 years and linearly extrapolate out, you're going to be wrong by a factor of two is my guess. And, and I think I think the interesting the interesting thing that that comes to my mind, as you say, OK, so that's where that's where some of the things that maybe the lower level things that lower, lower, lower level things might be at taking care of that inherent in that is the higher level things will need more personal things. And then it goes back to relationship and people knowing who you are and knowing that you are quality. So yeah. that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, cool. thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's see, Phyllis, I think we kind of answered, we kind of answered the question of animation being only done in LA and New York. I think, I think we touched base on that uh, with with the with things opening and the evolution. So yeah. it <laughs> is true and it isn't true, right? I mean, it's still based here. It's where the work happens as COVID shifts, as COVID shifts and things get back. It's it's still um, it's still like this is where the work happens, um, but what the possibilities are for doing the work other places is opened up and expanded, I, th I think. Um, but but you still have the, that problem of, I mean, if you're, if you're Bo Weaver, you can live in Ojai and do whatever you want to do because you're an established known quantity. If you're right. not him and you, now, funny, speaking of Bo, um, there's a, there's a Bo Barker who lives in a 200 year old farmhouse in Iowa. Now he's rep by DDO and he works all the time and he actually has always lived in the Midwest and has never lived in a major center, mm -hmm. but for him clawing his way up the ladder is certainly not nearly as potentially easy as if he lived in LA Sunday was the annual APA West coast mixer. There were 70 narrators, 70 audiobook narrators and some publishers in a bar in person in mm -hmm. studio city it costs 20 dollars, right so those are the kinds of opportunities that you have to compensate for and so you know one potential plan or idea might be if you're interested in the kind of work that's being done out of new york go live in new york for a year two years come out to la for a year or two years with the understanding that 
you know, you're not trapped here forever, presuming that you become successful enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the ultimate joke in the industry right now is, you know, what's the best way to become, you know, the most, the highest paid possible voiceover artist? And the answer is uh, be an on-camera movie star celebrity. Right. Right. And that's how you get paid the most for VO, you know. <laughs> it's, it's always the option, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and if I can jump in, Phyllis, I, I saw you, uh, if I can get to your second question, uh, get that one in the room about looking for work outside of the mainstream. Did you want to ask your question, Phyllis, so we get your voice in the room? Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. I asked if you, how do you find uh, audio book work outside of ACX? The way that I did it and continue to do it, this is an old joke, you know, how do you get an elephant in an oak tree? You have them sit on an acorn and be really patient. <laughs> uh, so the answer is uh, Book Expo America no longer exists. As of the pandemic, it, you know, it, it mm. shot itself in the head and it doesn't exist anymore. But Book Expo America was the biggest book fair. And so there would be first time authors, there'd be indie publishers, there'd be all kinds of people. So you could literally walk into a booth and go, oh, so you're the University of Nova Scotia Press. You have some interesting titles. Have you considered doing audiobooks? You haven't. Why? Because you know the budget would be between eight and ten thousand dollars a piece. You don't know when you're going to return. How about if we were to share some of the risk by doing a small amount up front as a PFH to cover my out of pocket expenses for the proofing and the editing and so on. And I will invest some of my time as a revenue share hybrid deal. And you could and can still, you know, uh, thrill people with that opportunity. That's mm -hmm. audiobook specifically. The very best advice that I ever heard for other genres of VO is very simple. If you live in Ogallala, Nebraska, start calling or start recognizing that you're annoyed by the AVR systems for, you know, the local public library, the used car dealer and whatever. And in some cases, and I'm, I'm not necessarily suggesting that you should do comp or, or demos for people unsolicitedly, but you certainly could start with the idea of saying, hi, who's your advertising agency? Oh, you do it in house. Well, great. Who's in charge of your marketing communications? Okay. It's the secretary to the VP. Great. Can I talk to them? Hi, you know, um, I've noticed that your music on hold announcement is, uh, let's say suboptimal. I do this for a living. And if I did it, it would sound like this. Would you like to get together and talk about the possibilities and even do a little five second or whatever thing for their music, you know, their, their, their on hold thing or their website or whatever. So there's a huge underserved population that has no clue or certainly, you know, very low expectations about having access to professional trained voiceover talent that can change the way that they appear to their customers. And, and then that, that's, that's, that's the entrepreneurial mindset uh, of uh, a lot of the times we talk, we talk about the image of if you know what you want, right? If you know what you want and you want to like, say you want to get into the concert, right? So you could get into the concert by standing in line around the corner to hope that by the time you get there, that there's a ticket that you can pay for, or you can figure out, you know, do you know someone in the band? How can you help with the venue? Like, how can you get to the place where you're not automatically standing in line, but you have, you're bringing your value to the people who need it in a, in a direct way. And hypothetically, if you're a student in junior high school that has a wood shop, a metal shop, and a print shop, because it was a billion years ago, and you printed yourself some press passes indicating that you <laughs> occasionally submitted items to the Lewis and Clark Trailblazer, <laughs> You could show them to the guy who's guarding the backstage entrance and say, hi, I'm here to interview the band, <laughs> implying that it was prearranged, whether it was or not. And they might let you in and you might become friends with Peter, Paul and Mary or the <laughs> Kingston trio, and they We've might invite you to hang out backstage. <laughs> We've gotten lost in metaphor, but it is interesting, like how to think outside of the box yeah. and not to game. Not It's not about gaming. It's about understanding what the game is 
is. And so what are other ways than ACX? Well, um, there's a cool thing called Ahab now, yeah. which was started by Penguin Random House as their in-house roster and now has opened up that all the publishers are using them. So that is a, a, that is a great way to, to get your stuff in the mix at the highest levels. Um, and you, so I think, I think it's, 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 um, how, what are the ways that you can un understand what the game is and then think of other ways. And, um, any thoughts on this, Dan? Uh, no, I think Byron covered it all. Cool. You know? okay. uh, how do you spell Ahab? A-H-A-B. Yeah. Um, well, let's, let's go to, um, let's go to Bill. One, one other quick thing, oh. just cause I happen to have audio visual aids. Um, Besides, since since Book Expo America doesn't exist anymore, there are literary journals. Oh, that's interesting. That are published every few months. Some of them are poetry. Some of them are fiction, nonfiction, graphics, art, and so on. Mm -hmm. So the you know the 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 post-it note tabs. I go through this looking for typically short stories that would be really good for me to use in some of the, the workouts that I do and so on. But also, if you some, read something that you really like, there's the author's name. Look and see if he's got any audiobooks published already, because if he doesn't, you know that he's an active writer, you know that he's high enough quality to get published in a you know, national or international literary journal, perhaps he would be interested in someone doing their audiobook. Right. And that's that's finding where where, you know, we talk about the crosshairs of commerce, <laughs> where to what you do and what people need meet. So that that's interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's go to Bill's question. Um, it's a, a tech question. Uh, Dan, why don't you take it with Bill? Why don't you ask your question and uh, you go. Open it up. Uh, go yeah. ahead, Bill. Can you hear me OK? Uh, yeah, yep. it's a little, a little muffly, but we got it. I'm sorry. Let me put my I, I'm on. Pardon me for the handheld iPad, but I wanted to. No, it's, you can, we, can, we can hear you good enough to, to ask your question. Go ahead. Okay. I want to illustrate my point. A question about noise floor. I have a booth that you can see there. Now, mm -hmm. this is the outside wall. Uh, the outside wall. Now, my noise floor prior to uh, processing is, is uh, negative 35 to negative 43. After processing, Actually. I can. After processing, I can get negative uh, 60, that's fine. But I'm worried about uh, directed sessions and they're not gonna be happy with my raw, unadulterated noise floor. So my question is this, prior to actually building a booth around my booth, consisting of you know drywall and framing and so forth, would it do any good to build one wall and slide it in between the outside wall and the booth if mass is king in attenuation, would that do any any uh, any good prior to actually building a booth to surround this booth? Yeah, well, it it couldn't hurt. Um, you know, any any density or mass that you can put between you and the sound is going to help. But you have to understand that sound is coming through the room from everywhere. It's coming through a window. It's bouncing off walls. It's coming back to the microphone. So the only way to really prevent the exterior noise for the most part is to really build a, a you know, we don't call it a soundproof booth, but you want to build something that is acoustically tight. Uh, mm. And so a, you know, a, a booth, a PVC booth with some producer's choice blankets on it isn't, isn't going to cut the mustard because those things are, are as transparent as, you know, sunlight going through a picture window. Uh, they, they don't stop sound. They, they prevent sound from reflecting back, but sound goes right through them. Uh, so in order to have a, a system that is going to be sound, you know, soundproof, or at least have a low enough sound floor, you really do have to build something pretty specific or find a place that is, you know, not surrounded by exterior walls, like an interior walk-in closet, something along those lines, those do a lot better. And that might, that might help you out a little bit more. Uh, but there's nothing you can really do with a PVC booth, except be in a very, very quiet room. So if you've got it in a noisy room, Bill, I would suggest that, you know, perhaps play with where it is in the room, what direction your microphone is facing, that sort of thing. Uh, and then, and play with uh, looking at the noise floor. What kind of a mic are you using? 
Uh, I have a Cinco D2, and I ordered a uh, 416. So I am using okay. the you know, shotgun mic. It's just that freeway noise coming through that wall produces a low hum that is always there because the freeway never goes away. And it seems yeah, like I, I was going to ask, thir minus 30 is terribly high for a residential, so I was going to ask which freeway were you next to. So there it is. <laughs> Every freeway that exists is right outside. I'm on the top of a hill, and the freeway's at the bottom of the hill, and it never shuts up. Mm. And uh, yeah. I guess I'm going to build a booth around this booth because I can't afford a you know six thousand dollar booth someday. But right yeah. now, you can do something. Yeah, that's I, I that's that would that would be my suggestion is, you know, try and build something or find something a little bit but you know more isolated. Uh and of course there's the always the there's always the expression of you live where you choose to live. And if you're you know, you're trying to do voiceover and that's not the best place to do it, you know, you have to make those types of considerations. If you can't make that consideration, then yeah, you have to look at building something to isolate yourself a little better. Yeah, I can change where I live. In the future, right now, I'm, this is it. So. Where are you? Why are we? <laughs> Excellent. Good, good, good. But I, lo I love this, this, this sense of, uh, you know, the foundation, one of the foundational principles, Dan, that you, that you always talk about, work with what you have, where you have, get it the best that you can get, and then evolve as, as you go, right? Yeah. And I, and I would suggest avoid using filters, uh, because, you know, we don't talk to other human beings through filters and you want to sound like you. And, you know, if you if you use a noise filter, it's got to be set so precisely so that they can't tell that you've used a noise filter, because the second they hear that, they're going to go. Eh. And if you're doing live sessions, you've got to have you've got to have a live noise gate. And that's really hard to set. And they're going to notice that as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need to have better isolation. Mm -hmm. And then, and then with with the four sixteen, it'll be even more sensitive, right? Well, it will help. Yeah, four sixteen can help you in certain situations. Just make sure you're aiming the microphone away from the window. Hmm. I'm, I'm curious. Is it actually an openable window, or what is it? Uh, no, it's a uh, it's a wall more than a window. It's, hmm. it's uh, just on the hmm. low is coming through the wall most. Now that. The, the, the thing that I like to suggest that people think about is frequency and wavelength are inversely related. So if you look at an organ, you're going to see pipes that are, you know, inch and a quarter long. Those get up into, you know, they have harmonics going up past 20 kilohertz. But if you say, what's a 60 cycle tone or an 80 cycle tone, you divide 80 into 1100 feet per second and you end up coming up with a 60 foot, you know, six six story long organ pipe to get those to get those frequencies and therefore unless you've got something that's you know will trap a 60 foot wavelength that i mean that's why you hear you know when 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 the low riders cruise down the street and you're a block away what's the first thing that you hear don't 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 you hear the bass hmm. and you don't hear any high end even if they're right next to you because the wavelengths of the bass frequency will transit right through your car much easier than any of the high frequencies. And you have the same problem living next to the freeway. Interesting, interesting. So many, so many layers. Yeah. Well, let's see, we've got uh, 15 more minutes. Let's see what, what other questions we can get to. Um, let's see, I think we're calling at this hour. Um, let's see, oh, uh, there's one, uh, Stephen asked a question privately that got uh, in here. Oh, wait, no, let's do Thomas's. Uh, Thomas, you want to ask your question? Sure. It's kind of a process, a process question, yeah. Yeah, I, I've had a new animation gamer and wanted me to do voicing, and I have, and he's only sent storyboards, but no script per se. So I'm able to pull the scripts from the storyboard, but as a voiceover artist, businessman entrepreneur mm -hmm. should i try to help him <laughs> in some way uh to kind of up his genre a little bit and how he supplies the scripts for future references well i mean if if he you know this this is an interesting entrepreneurial uh inter entrepreneurial mindset right of finding people who are coming in as you're coming in and then rise up with them right so i think i think the questions are yeah uh, 
anything that's going to make your workflow more efficient, if you can share like, hi, um, if, if you, you know, and, and, or it, this is a job you have or, or a job you're auditioning for. No, it's a job I have. You have a job I'm, you have. Okay. But, so, but yeah, I'm downloading all the, the information and everything and then yeah. printing them off well, and trying to get an idea of the flow. So then I would, I would say you know, this, this is interesting because we're, uh, it's, oh, oh, talk about that later, but um, as you're building relationship with clients, sure. um, especially if it's someone you want to work with again, if you can go like, hi, this is my process. Mm -hmm. And if you give me a big pile of stuff, that's fine. This is how it should be, could be for the optimal workflow. If you would like me to sort through it, you can, I can charge you for that. Um, you know, or, or, you know, this, this is what makes it, you know, you, you could have, you figure out how to have that discussion. You don't just have to go like, oh, right. But I love the spirit that you're coming at it. Like, how can I help you be better so I can do better? So we can, you know, we, we always talk about the dojo. There's no they, there's only we. So if you take a we mentality without taking it on yourself, right? Mm -hmm there's the, I, I don't think there's and, and if anyone was like no this is the way we do it I'm like oh, okay good luck mister because <laughs> that's not how it's done right so uh th th that would be my take on it without being without being righteous or martyrdom right like oh, I not, not, not at all I, I, no, I want to yeah, no, I don't get I don't both. get that energy at all yeah exactly um it, it, it has worked so far but I'm, you know, I'm looking further down the road. I'm at the very end of the uh, project itself, but mm -hmm. I'm thinking further down the road, maybe, you know, possibly what he can do mm -hmm. in order to make it easier for themselves. You know, if they're continuing yeah. on and what they're doing so far, they've done a great job, mm -hmm. but for the voice artists themselves, mm -hmm. it could be easier. And I think, you know, it could be more congruent. There's, well, there's, think, a, there's oh, a kind of a continuum, okay? <laughs> If you think of a diagonal line, lower left, upper right, if someone is just starting out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to come down on them with a hammer and say, you don't even know how to format a oh, script. No, no. You don't even know this is that and the other. It's not terribly productive and they're probably not going to want to work with you again or oh. even continue working with you on the other end of the continuum. Um, union talent will get spanked if they do proofreading or editing of crappy copy for the client because the client should be paying for that. The client should be paying a proofer. They should be paying an editor. And if a voice talent does that and doesn't charge for it, then, okay, there's this concept of if a mouse goes through a maze and goes directly to the cheese, it's worse than if it's never been in the maze because it not only does it not know where the dead ends are, it presumes that anywhere it goes, there's going to be cheese. So you are unfortunately rewarding bad behavior by helping the person, even though you, that's not what you intend to do. So I think somewhere in the middle there is the idea of, okay, I get that you don't know how to do this. Here's some resources. Here's some, here's a YouTube tutorial. You can watch about prepping a script for an animation piece or whatever. And you can do a little bit for them, but you can also say, you didn't know that this is, it's kind of like a tennis match. Um, the, the ball is on the wrong side of the court. This is not something you should expect other people to do for you unless you, you know, figure out how to compensate them for it or whatever. So the bottom line is it's a slippery slope because yeah. if you help somebody out once, it's like, well, you did it for me last time. Aren't you gonna do it for me again? <laughs> so you got to be a little careful of that. So that being said, I think there's a common ground, you know, as Tish was saying, the intersection of the two slopes, which is you're wanting to help them so that you can be a better, they can be, a, you're wanting to teach them how to be a better client for you as a professional on a certain mm -hmm. level. And that's appropriate. Yeah. And, and that's also the question of where, where does the voice artist have a little bit of say, you know, because a lot of times we're just grateful, my goodness, you know, when we're going to get a chance to do some work, you know, but to that, do something that we love, but at the same time, we're trying to step in and go, hey, you know, and then you don't know how far you're really stepping. Yeah. And I think, I think that's a really interesting, an interesting, uh, interesting exploration of this idea of being an entrepreneur and running your business, 
right? If you run a business and you know you follow the protocol of the Better Business Bureau or you know submitting for a, a, a you know request for a proposal, you follow those rules. You don't go like oh, I do it this way, but you know so that's how we how we fit in. But the mindset is. I run my business. These, you know, this is how I I want to run my business, um, rather than submitting or, or just being thank you, thank you, right? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Great, great comments. Mm -hmm. Howard here in UK. Oh hi. Uh, <laughs> hi there. I, I inevitably came in late, unfortunately. So if you cover this, stop me. Fascinated to hear this because I, I was a journalist and I, I cringe when I see a lot of scripts. They're far too long. They're wasting their space. I can certainly improve, but I don't like to offer it. What's the best way to approach that, to offer that add-on? And indeed, how common is it that people actually do it saying, yes, I can do this as well as the voice? Well, I think I think it really depends on how you how you are getting your work, what your relationship is, right? If you're working with if you're working with a client that you have like established, like I am the point person, I am the voiceover person, and you see need and you can build and help relationship like that, then you identify the different skills that you bring and put them as like line items, right? As a proofer, I do this. As an editor, I do this. Or as a whole package, it costs this, right? Okay. So that's different than if you get an audition from your representation team, and this is what it, this is what comes. Then that's not your place. Your 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 place is to be the be the voiceover person and we get hired because we can a be the rescue dog right here's here's the situation you need this this is my take on it i'm going to come and sit and stay and do the best job that i have using all the skills that i have there's that rescue dog and then frankly we get paid money because we can make poopy things sound good right okay. that's 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 our job like oh this is poopy i'm going to make it less poopy <laughs> <laughs> thank you tish it does sound to me as though it could kind of uh, blur our blur our offer a bit to say we were doing that as well better to say we've had all this experience doing voice that's what we want to do we'll focus on the interpretation well, and i think you know i think it's it, it also depends on how you've set up your business because each of us has okay. different ways right different ways that our that our business flows yeah cool 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 oh um uh Awesome. So we've got six minutes. Dan's got a heart out. Let's see if are there any other like super Dan oriented questions from someone. Uh, I see from I think the next one is from Ethan and then Katrina Owens had one right under after that. Let's do Katrina because Ethan already asked one. All right. Go ahead, Katrina. Let me get Katrina. Hello. Hi there. Oh, yeah. Hey. On. Go ahead. Hey, folks. Uh, so, Dan, I recently purchased a new MacBook Pro, been having all kinds of computer problems. And I realized that they don't have the same ports that the older computers have. So, I'm just wondering should I purchase the new a new adapter from Apple, or is there something compatible that's less expensive that I can use? And by the way, I have a road system, a road interface. Yeah. Oh, you, well, you've got the uh, the AI Damn one. Damn you, that... dongles! Damn you, dongles! That's my that's, that's my take dongles. on it. <laughs> oh. yeah, I mean, Belk, Belkin makes dongles like this with a USB C connector on it that will give you connectivity to more USB mm -hmm. and HDMI and, and stuff like that. I've got a a pile oh. of those. There is the one specifically made for the MacBook that has two. Uh, Thunderbolt plugs in it that goes right into it and gives you that USB capability. Uh, they're made by a couple of manufacturers. So yeah, unless you have, you're actually using USB uh, C devices, you've got to, you have to use one of those adapters. One of those things that I guess Apple didn't really think all the way through or yeah. thought early through and <laughs> that, oh, we can make lots of money, crazy. you know, like, oh, forget, right. Interesting. Make all their money off ink. We can make money off selling yeah dollars. yeah it's so inelegant yeah that it's it just it really is i have a little i don't even i'll have to look up what the what the thing is but i have a little thing that's just on top of my on top of my preamp that when i need to do all the things that 
previously was elegantly built into the computer that was that much wider. Um, not that I have any opinions about this. Um, yeah, it's it's just right there. So when I need to, you know, put the Ethernet in, and it's 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 right there. So it's just it's just another, you know, just another thing that you put outside, and it it's dumb if especially if you had it the other way. So yeah, um, awesome. Let's see. Well, let's let's uh, let's let's get through like how we contact everybody, and then uh, if if we have time for another question, and then we can go into breakout rooms. Um, so, uh, Dan, how how um, how best for people to keep in touch with you, and what kind uh, of things can you help them with? Yes, homevoiceoverstudio.com uh, is the, the preferred place to find me, and uh, you can contact me from there. If you've got some audio you want me to listen to, I've got a specimen collection cup at the bottom of the page. Just scroll all the way down there, click on that, and you can submit an, an MP3 demo to me, and I'll give it a, a good analysis as to what's going on in your studio and if there's a problem, generally how to fix it unless it's really, really bad. Which, and that's for that's for a modest a modest price point, right? 20, 25 bucks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that that's like getting an understand. It's like getting an est like an estimate of like, all right, here's what you need. Yeah, right. It's, it's, Sometimes it's, it's something minor and just a minor adjustment. So yeah, yeah, and it's amazing what you can do. Like what what tuned in ears can be, can hear. Like oh, I see. Yeah, good, good, good. So I think Jeffrey's put all the ways to uh, reach. Uh, everybody here and and byron um we didn't even get to touch on abaton um maybe uh you can just give a little a little pitch of what abaton is and why everybody sure <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. basically i got very unhappy that people were scheduling great things i wanted to do on top of each other and i said you know why isn't there a calendar a a an independent as opposed to you know, here's my company's events kind of thing. Um, and so we put together a website, abaton.com, A-B-A-T-O-N.com. And it only has every single event relative to a voiceover artist that is in the entire universe in English to start. We're also doing a bunch of Spanish events and starting to do Tagalog, but we have not yet ventured into <laughs> Hindi or Portuguese. So that may come later. But basically it's free for the moment for everybody. Um, so if you mention, if you go there now, there's kind of three major choices. The top one is take the nickel tour, which is a two and a half minute video. And if you don't run screaming in the opposite direction after having seen that, you can sign up for the wait list. And if when you sign up for the wait list and it says, how did you hear about us? You say VO Dojo, we will immediately kick you to the curb. No, we'll immediately escalate you to the front of the, uh, the wait list and send you an invitation to come on the site. We're in an open beta at the moment, but we've got literally thousands of people registered who seem to be enjoying it and posting their own events. And uh, so that's, you know, that's the story about Abaton. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that's another, that's another way to be a, a wise entrepreneur of understanding where all the opportunities are and where you want to, you know, where you want to invest and articulate what you need next and then find the opportunities. And then just opportunities to connect and well, the, I mean, the alternative, you don't need to go to the Abaton website. You can just sign up for all 234 Facebook groups that relate to voiceover <laughs> and get on every single coach's mailing list right. by going to all of their websites <laughs> and then hoping that you see something on Eventbrite for the people that don't do any of those things. You right. could do that. It could happen. <laughs> you can do this the hard way or the easy way. So That's yay. Right. And then uh, just in general, as we come, as we come to the top of the hour, um, anything having to do with Dojo, um, we have, uh, we are here to guide, support, connect, and accelerate you every step of the way from I don't know to working pro. Um, we do this every Wednesday, the first Wednesday of every month at 10 a.m. PT. We have, um, you should do voiceover intensives coming up in October, the last ones for the year. Um, and that's whether whether you're um, just starting your journey or partway on your journey and looking to take it to the, to the next step. It's a great place to stop. Um, we have um, uh, four times a month, we have our VO Dojo Pro Fight Clubs, working pro workouts, uh, top-notch talent come together with the decision makers who hire us. Um, 
this Friday, uh, Crystal Oppenheimer, who is a trailer producer, promo trailer producer from Buddha Jones, one of the top promo trailer houses in the country is uh, coming back. We love her. Um, and then uh, if you are a working pro and it seems like we've got a, a good number of, of people who are out and on the, on the path, um, Nth Degree is our working pro uh, focus action forum. So if you're interested in any of this, you can sign up for a voiceover once over call, uh, 15 minutes, we can get a sense of where you're at and where you'd like to be and, and uh, point you in the right direction. Um, and if anybody wants to hang out more, just stay on the line, It'll just 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 hang out and we'll see who's left and we'll, we'll separate people out into, um, into, uh, uh, into breakout rooms and we can chat and discuss more. Dan, I know you got a role. So thank you, Madeira, it's great to see you. And, um, um look forward to the goodness ahead and and uh really dan is a, an amazing resource so um don't hesitate to reach out to him also dan in case you hadn't noticed dan has a mustache <laughs> not only a mustache a trademark mustache so yeah um so awesome thanks dan and uh everybody thank you for being here uh, we'll have the recording and um uh byron and i also did a uh we have a Thing that we're doing called 21 questions it's sort of like a uh auxiliary interview so we'll be editing that and uh making that available with the replay as well so we go a little bit more into it's kind of like a mini podcast um that we'll make available as well um yeah so great to have you uh, anyone who wants to hang out um hang out if you got a role we'll see you next time and uh yeah, we'll, we'll hang out for a few few minutes. Just, you know, stay for as long as you can. Byron, if you have, you know, 15 minutes more. Oh, no. In for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> Bring it. Yeah. Awesome. Great to see everyone. And we'll, we'll um, actually, I'm going to, I'll be right back. And then, uh, Jeffrey, we can start, um, we can start breaking up people into rooms. So we'll hang out and we'll, we'll find a, find a room for you.